Hi folks, we love our Willeman Macadel, but one of the tougher things on turning with that machine can be chip control. We then had a friend reach out struggling with the same thing, chip control on finish passes on certain materials. And while there are many things you can adjust from speeds and feeds to chip breakers to depths of cut, et cetera, what I wanted to talk about in this video is what tools you've got in your wheelhouse to control the toolpath itself. Caveat, this may not necessarily leave the best surface finish, but sometimes you may be willing to take that trade off, uh, especially on a part like this where you just may not be able to accept chips building up, especially on these internal features. So the goal is to get a toolpath that will move along a profile, especially a complex profile or an internal shape profile, and retract to some amount that can thin out or completely break off that chip to avoid those big bird's nests. So to rewind, how I would normally finish a part like this would be fusion, turning, profile finishing, and basically click OK. And one of the things I love about Fusion, especially on the turning stuff, it's so easy to get tool pass. And if we look at the simulation, tool moves along, inside profile comes down here, moves out, and we're done. That's great. The problem with the finishing strategy is on the passes tab, we do not have the pecking option that we have on the roughing. So finishing actually isn't gonna work for us. Turning, profile roughing. I like to just create the toolpath, click OK. That way when I go back into it, I can edit one thing at a time and I don't risk hitting escape and losing all my progress. So if we look at this toolpath, not what we're looking for whatsoever. Bunch of retracts, bunch of roughing work. The toolpath is moving all the way out because until you define a more specific stock infusion, it thinks this whole internal cavity is filled with material and it has to come back all the way out. So one of the things I'm doing in this example is we hop back into the design space. I've got my part modeled and I went ahead and did an offset and created a, a stock part that is slightly smaller on this entire uh, inside diameter and that does take a little bit of work also can be really helpful if you're trying to very specifically model the remnant amount of stock whether that's just a radial offset or whether it's remnants from say being uh, previously drilled etc so now if we go back into our toolpath and we just change one thing which is under geometry rest machining source for this stock is setup stock click ok we've at least improved the retracts it's pretty nice but why is it still taking all these progressive little cuts? To change that, we go to the passes tab and so, sort of uh, not intuitive, but maximum depth of cut. Right now we're set at just under 40 thousandths of an inch. We change that to say two inches, something quite extreme. You'll see what that means is Fusion now thinks you're telling it, hey, you can take this whole cut in one pass. We're getting actually fairly close to what we want. Simulate that. You can see now we can come in and do this all in one pass, effectively a finishing pass, except the benefit now is under the passes tab, we also have the use pecking feature. I've actually asked if Autodesk will include this in the finishing strategy because that would save us some of this work. I don't think there's any software reason or philosophical reason why it couldn't be there, except the point that on a finishing strategy, normally this isn't something you'd want. It's certainly not going to help your surface finish. But again, we're trying to figure out what tools you have in your toolbox to solve this problem. So let's set the pecking depth to say every 10 thou we cut, let's retract, say just two thou. Really all we're trying to do, actually we may want to do that more, uh, 10 thou, to thin out or, or completely break that chip. And so now if we simulate and we've got the points turned on and you can see As we come in here, it'll cut forward and retract back. Cuts more material, retracts back, breaking that chip. We're off the part right now because I think stock to leave is still turned on. Turn that off just to prove this works. Again, there's trade-offs coming in and out of the cut could change the way your insert wears. Um, you may need to come out even more to fully break the chip. May not have to come out much at all. Sometimes the heat and the motion of a thinned out chip alone uh, can cause it to, to break off and flush out. Coolant uh, can help as well here. But sometimes, when you, especially when you're dealing with internal parts like this and a material that's not uh, conducive to breaking chips, you'll take any tool you can. And I hope this helps. As always, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.